So um, for our first session, we are very excited to hear from our co-deans, um, Professor Robbie Goh and Professor Sun Ye Neng, and then followed by two of our vice deans, Associate Professor Melvin Yap and Associate Professor Chu Fuk Tin. Um, and then also later on, we have uh, Professor Sao Chung Ho and, Prof and Associate Professor Loy Hui Chie, who will be part of the panel and answering some questions. So I will now just pass the time over to Prof Go and Prof Sun. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of my colleague and co-dean, Prof Sun Yen Leng, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you uh, as we introduce this exciting new program, uh, College of Humanities and Sciences, hereafter referred to as CHS. This is a virtual college collaboration between the faculties of Arts and Social Sciences and the Faculty of Science. Uh, so I'm just going to say a few uh, brief introductory words, turn the time over to my, my co-dean, uh, and then the vice deans who have been doing a lot of the planning for the program, uh, Prof uh, Chu Fook Tim and Prof Melvin Yap will actually walk you through what the program entails, which is probably what you're most interested in anyway. Yeah? But just a kind of quick explanation of why we started this program. Yeah, it wasn't to create work for us and it wasn't to confuse you. We did this because we feel that this is the best way to prepare our graduates from both faculties uh, for uh, employability and for a lifetime of, of learning and working in an increasingly disruption prone and volatile world. Uh, as we've seen from COVID, it, COVID really just threw everybody uh, out of, of sync, right? Uh, and some of the, the industries were more badly affected than others, aviation, tourism, hospitality, those kinds of things, yeah? And we really hope that many of them had the, the, the flexibility to, to be able to adjust to those kinds of concerns, uh, those kinds of issues. So that's what we're talking about. And that's why the CHS uh, trains you in very... Uh, important core essential skills and competencies. We have things like AI, design thinking, uh, writing and communication. We also have interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary training so that you get used to thinking uh, in, in through other disciplinary lenses. You can uh, work better as part of a multidisciplinary team in future. You can apply different kinds of disciplinary approaches to solve the complex problems that you guys are going to encounter. Yeah, the, the workforce, the workplace is going to change very rapidly after you graduate. Uh, and we really, are, we really have to teach you to have the kinds of skills and approaches that will be able to adapt and adjust even as their work situation changes. The CHS curriculum is designed for all students. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, the science students will have to take some of the humanities and arts and social sciences modules and vice versa. So therefore, we have to design the modules to be accessible, to be uh, uh, um, handled by all kinds of students, right? So no fear that you'll be losing out because you don't have that background. You know, this, the modules have to be designed for all the students to be able to, to handle competently. Right? There is a kind of psychological uh, uh, prop if you need it, which is of course the SU option. So that if you, in the end, I believe that all the students uh, who apply themselves to the modules will be able to, to learn and to, to handle them effectively. But for some reason, if something really goes wrong with one or two of your modules, you do have the, the SU option so that you can protect your CAP. And uh, if you do come down a little bit, it won't uh, affect you too badly. Yeah. Um, so. In summary, this is a very flexible curriculum that allows many possibilities of major, minor, double major, minor, uh, and double minor combination or the kind of shotgun elective because we leave a lot of space in the, uh, the free elective uh, portion of the curriculum so that you can design your own uh, curriculum as well. The idea is really for us to, to train flexible team players, lifelong learners, even deep specialists that will be able to help our society deal with the complex problems that we're going to face and help you guys remain uh, employable, desirable, wanted by employers. So without more uh, further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to my co-dean, Prof. Sun Yeneng. Yeneng, please. Thank you, Prof. Go. A very good morning to students and parents. As you would have heard in the news, the new College of Humanities and Sciences, or CHS, will enhance our undergraduate's learning experiences. How will it do so? The college offers a distinct interdisciplinary approach and a customized curriculum. You will gain skills to integrate knowledge and insights across different disciplines, which are highly valued by employers. 
you will have great flexibility to decide on how and what you want to learn. CHS students can choose and combine from around 30 majors, 50 minors, and over 1,000 modules offered by both the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and Faculty of Science. Two of the largest and most established faculties in Singapore. You will enjoy access to the expertise and the facilities of both faculty. With so many possibilities open to you, you will be able to plan your own learning journey based on your personal and career aspirations. You will also come away with better capacity for lifelong learning. Our vice deans will now share the details with you. We look forward to seeing you at NUS. Um, thanks very much, Prof. Robbie Goh and Prof. Sun Yenneng, um, for your valuable insights on the new College of Humanities and Sciences. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see all of you today. Um, my name is um, A.P. Melvin Yap. Um, together with my colleague, A.P. Chu Fook Tim, uh, we are very excited to share more details of the new College of Humanities and Sciences with you. Hopefully, um, this will provide you with a taste of what you will experience as a member of the inaugural cohort of CHS students. Uh, next, please. Um, so as the two deans have um, already reminded us, uh, we live in a world that is largely interconnected and technology driven. Um, to make matters worse, the world is also increasingly volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. You simply have to look at the events of the past year for proof of that. Next. Furthermore, as you can see on this slide, the problems we face today are intricate and complex and we need heavily interdisciplinary teams to come up with good solutions. Next. At the same time, um, the university regularly engages employers to find out what they hope to see in our graduates. Um, these employers tell us that their ideal graduate isn't just strong in book knowledge or technical skills. Instead, they hope to see a graduate who possesses the various soft skills that are needed to think outside of the box and to work effectively together. So our question for you then is this, how do you want to prepare yourself for this war through your university education? Next. Of course, um, we shouldn't toot our own horn too much, but I'm duty bound to inform you um, that as a member of the CHS family, uh, you will be part of NUS, a university that has consistently been recognized as one of the top universities um, both in Asia and in the world. Or as my colleague um, Prof Lawyer likes to put it, we are basically the top dog of a university in Singapore. Next. So more relevantly for all of you, um, what has happened is that two of the largest and most established faculties in NUS have come together in partnership to offer you this new and enhanced undergraduate experience. Uh, indeed, you will be the very first um, cohort of students um, to benefit from this experience. Next. Okay, so in CHS, um, you, you're going to receive a strong foundation in 21st century skills, and you will also be nurtured to be adaptable, resilient, and empathetic. Um, the college will create multiple pathways so that you can flexibly pursue both breadth and depth across multiple disciplines. 
Last and certainly not least, a hallmark of CHS is its emphasis on interdisciplinarity. We want our students to think outside disciplinary silos and to leverage the knowledge and tools of multiple disciplines to solve the vexing and complex problems that plague society today. Next. Many of you would know seniors who are graduates of FASS or FOS. Um, so it's good for you to know what the key differences are. Um, first and foremost, instead of being admitted into FASS or FOS, uh, all of you will now be admitted into CHS. I should also note that this is a direct honours program, so all of you will be graduating with an honours degree. Second, once you are in CHS, you can potentially choose any major offered by either FASS or FOS. Um, in the past, you had to commit in advance to a particular faculty if you had a specific major in mind. And third, uh, we have reduced the size of the major from about half the curriculum to one third of the curriculum. Um, this gives you more elective space to pursue your interests. Next. Um, fourth, we have set up a remarkably flexible curriculum structure that makes it easy for students to pursue major minors, second majors, and even double degrees. And finally, CHS features a brand new 13-module common curriculum that covers 21st century skills such as computational thinking, artificial intelligence, and includes interdisciplinary modules in the humanities, social sciences, and sciences. Uh, next. So for those of you who have just received your A-level results and trying to decide where to go to, what sets CHS apart? These are the three main differentiators. First, we have a deliberate curriculum. As mentioned um, earlier, um, CHS is characterized by its distinct interdisciplinary approach. Uh, we have crafted brand new integrated modules in support of this mission. We have also carefully curated a series of high quality modules that were designed from the ground up to embrace an interdisciplinary approach. Two, scale of impact. CHS taps and builds on the deep research expertise of two of the largest and most established faculties in Singapore to serve the more than 2,000 students per cohort. Such scale affords unprecedented access to a wide ranging and deep pool of talented researchers and teachers. The size and diversity of the student body, basically you guys, also provides many opportunities for intellectual cross fertilization. And third, unparalleled flexibility. CHS offers unprecedented choice and flexibility for students to pursue both breath and death from over the 1, over 1,000 modules we mount each academic year. Um, with over 20 majors, multiple minors, and a host of major, major, and major minor combinations, um, CHS offers a rich, diverse curriculum that can accommodate every student's strength, temperament, and aspirations. Next. So to recap, CHS provides you with a direct, honest four-year program. The common curriculum, as you can see in the pie chart, can be divided into three roughly equal parts. The common curriculum, major requirements, and unrestricted electives. In a short while, my colleague, Prof Chu, will be talking more about this curriculum and also about the many things you can potentially do with your unrestricted elective space. So just to let you know, to earn a major, you do 15 modules, 10 modules are needed for the second major, five modules for a minor. And very interestingly, you can also earn two degrees in four years if you complete the major requirements associated with two types of degrees, example, Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts. I will now pass the time to my colleague, Prof Chu, to tell you more about what you can expect from the CHS experience. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Now, let me bring you through the journey that you can experience when you come into the CHS, what we call here the CHS experience. I want to bring to you through the common curriculum first, simply because that will be the first thing you will see when you come into uh, NUS and into the CHS. Now, what we want to emphasize, however, is the diversity and student-centric journey that you will have at the end of the day. And let me explain this. Let me take you to a journey of the next four years that you will be with us. My colleague uh, Melvin has just told you about the common curriculum. And this is what you will face when you first come in but you will also be able to begin to take alongside with the common curriculum some of the modules that you want to explore within your majors and many other things as well. But let me dive into the common curriculum. It's made up of uh, general education modules, 
such as writing, community and engagement, design thinking, quantitative reasoning, artificial intelligence, and computational thinking. These are exposure modules, modules that across the whole university, all students in NUS will be taking in one form or another. Now these are, uh, some, to some of us, we sound very, very uh, sciencey, or to some of us may sound very uh, quantitative or mathematical, but let me assure you, it is meant for everybody. It is not meant for those who have already have had the background in their A-levels or so forth. Even if you have had some of these background, it doesn't mean that you will probably have a better uh, standing, but I think in the university, you will find that actually you will see the different way we will write, a different way we will think, and different way we will look at the different perspective of our lives. These are what these general education modules are going to take uh, and look like. We will also, within the CHS, have integrated modules where we, where we expose you to Asian studies across Southeast Asia, for example. We expose you to integrated humanities, simply being what it means to be human, basically. We will expose you to social sciences. We also expose you to scientific thinking and how science actually develops over the decades, over the years, over the centuries, and how we move things forward as well. Then we will expose you to interdisciplinary uh, uh, modules combining two or more of different areas. These will be foundation that will be able to transform you, bring you to the modern 21st century skills that people are going to look for and sought after. This will be a student-centric journey as uh, Prof. Melvin mentioned earlier. Your overall four years can indirectly be structured in a one-third, one-third one third structure. Common curriculum will take that one third. The major requirement will take the other one third or more. And you have many majors to choose from. Let me just show you some of them later on. But what's more interesting is the unrestricted electives. For some of you, you may choose to do more of your majors and you want to deep dive into the areas that you're most interested in. For example, if you want to be a physicist and that you say, I really love that field and I want to use all my electives to, to pursue uh, physics, and that's also possible within the unrestricted electives. Let me bring you through that journey and explain to you what we have for you. As mentioned by Melvin and my co-deans, basically, this will be common admissions. You will have more than 30 majors to choose from within the Asian Studies and Humanities, within Social Sciences, within the Sciences, and you can even choose amongst the newly crafted cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary programs such as Data Science and Economics, the Environmental Studies, Philosophy, uh, Politics, and Economics. You can combine between these majors, or you can choose to have a major, a primary major, and then maybe multiple minors even. Or if you choose, deep dive into one of these many majors. That's the flexibility that you will have when you come into the CHS. In fact, this is not new. Some of our existing students in the FASS as well and FOS, the School of Faculty of Science, are currently doing this. But when they do this at this moment, sometimes they take a little bit longer and sometimes they will extend their candidature or they have to upload or load in uh, their semesters a little bit more. But with the new CHS, we have created a curriculum, recurated the curriculum to allow all these possibilities and combinations. Now, you can do things combining, say, communications and new media with, say, pharmaceutical science. That will be very interesting, for example. You could also consider Chinese studies and quantitative finance. If you so decide that maybe one of these days you want to do work in the field of quantitative finance, but who knows, maybe that's 
that you're focusing yourself to be working in, say, in the greater China or areas like that, where you will be very well suited to the culture, to the understanding of, of the people, and to the workings of those areas. You could also combine two major fields like life science and geography, economics and statistics, and the very many more. The choices are yours. The combinations are plenty. You could combine majors with majors, majors with minors, and very many more as well. Those who are really interested and already very inclined towards interdisciplinary uh, 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 programs, we have three specially curated ones. Like I've mentioned, under PPE, pol Philosophy, Political Sciences, uh, and the Economics, Environmental Studies, combining multiple disciplines from law to biology to geography to even engineering and so forth. And then the latest one would be the data science and economics cross-disciplinary program. These are really exciting programs which are curated because the industry has indicated to us that this is what we need in the future moving forward. Let me look at it in a different way. I've just presented to you what CHS have prepared on the table. Now what I want to describe to you would be what would be something that you would think about and you would consider within yourself. Do you want to be the first type of person, a versatilis? Someone who will start with taking a common curriculum like everyone else, focus on a particular major within one third of their curriculum within the university, but then you take very many different types of modules so that you actually expose yourself into different the perspectives of different areas that are available to all of us. You are one who will say, I'm always eager to explore new things. I'm actually very versatile and you can count on me to always lead a fresh perspective on any topic. If you're one of those, you will be considered somebody who may be a versatilist. You may even take a minor to expand on one particular area that you are interested in. Very many of our students are versatilists like this. In the CHS, this is also one that we will encourage and actually one that we will enable you to uh, go through uh, the curriculum this way. Alternately, you could be an integrator. You want to be someone who has taken two majors very deep dive into two different majors. You could be, say, someone I, I mentioned just now who is a major in life sciences and a second major, say, in geography, or a major in communications and new media and a second major in pharmaceutical sciences, and so on. You are one who wants to connect between two, even sometimes very disparate fields, but you are expert in both at the end of the day. You are one who will want to integrate that. You are most welcome. And in fact, CHS will be the place for you as well. Additionally, there could be some of you who want to be what we call deep specialists. If you are a deep specialist, you're someone who's really already committed to say, I am focused and passionate on this craft of mine in the field, say, of physics, for example, in the field of, say, psychology, for example. I'm not narrow-minded. I am very deep. I can be someone who is a T graduate, and I'm going to talk about T graduates very often. A T graduate is someone who is going to be able to understand fields broadly, but yet someone who deep dive into a particular area. You are a deep specialist. And even this, CHS, there is a space and a place for you in CHS. In fact, some would say that actually the deep specialists who want to pursue an area in the CHS, they can even do more than what they would have already been doing in the past cohorts and previously. Because in the past cohorts, although the structures of the majors were larger, they were still restricted to certain areas. Today, a deep specialist coming into CHS can take up to even two thirds or even more actually of a particular field. So even deep specialists 
are someone whom we will welcome very much in CHS. This is an example of your study plan over the four years. And it doesn't look like, and then many of you may be asking, wow, it, uh, does it mean that I have to do a lot of the common core all in the first year or first two semesters, and I don't do my major until later? Not necessarily. You can already begin to explore your majors from the day go if you want to. We have what we call gateway modules where you can explore and see if that is the major you really want to uh, pursue. Or you could pursue two gateways and test them out and evaluate if this is an area of interest for you. A study plan like this gives you the flexibility as well to, uh, uh, to make your, up your mind along the way should you not have done so. Alternately, a study plan like this also enables someone who's already made up their mind to pursue their deep interests right from the day go. This is the kind of flexibility that we are according you. We also want you to realize that despite the fact that the curriculum looks like this and, and that, that we have such many big plans for you, we also have made a lot of extra enrichment for you such that you can still be part of the university scholars program, join this university new town colleges such as Tembusu Residential College 4, Alice and Peter Tan, RERC and so forth, and still be part of CHS where we have actually decided that many of the curriculum from the colleges, from the USP, the scholars program, can be mapped and vice versa mapped between and between, uh, within and between CHS and these programs. Additionally, if you come into the science faculty, you can also be part of the special program in science where we actually uh, train integrated scientists who will look at all the different sciences as well together. You're one who say you are passionate about integrating the different sciences. Come and join us in the special program in science within the CHS as well. In the CHS, we don't just want to talk about the curriculum and say that's what we want to, you to do. You will see that the CHS has more than 300, in fact, 340 in my last count actually, uh, partners with overseas universities. We make it a point that we have uh, many interactions with overseas universities such that it makes it easy for you to map things when you go for student exchange. If you don't want to commit yourself to a long-term student exchange in one year, half a semester, one semester, or even longer, you could also do winter programs and summer programs. This happened between the semesters during some parts of the holidays, and you will still have an exposure towards uh, living overseas and understanding cultures overseas. The diversity of programs that we have under these pro winter programs are uh, ranging from nanoscience to understanding Japan to maybe even uh, uh, looking at marine lives, living on a boat, for example, and very many more. So come in and learn to explore and we'll give you those opportunities. And some of these and many of these will count towards your curriculum within the UE space as well. We also have our OCs. Uh, college and U.S. Overseas College, especially for those who are budding entrepreneurs, to expose you to startup lives. This can be in places like Silicon Valley or even across the region all over the world. These will be partnering renowned partner universities where you can take modules, entrepreneur modules, work in a startup there as well. So this is exciting time to come to university and even more exciting if you come into CHS. But study abroad is just one area that we are really uh, creating the opportunities for you. Within CHS, when you come in, we have now come up with what we call a career preparation program, parallel to your curriculum. Right from the year one, where we will expose you to what we call career compass. This will be compulsory for all CHS students. Whether you choose to go on to work in the industry or you decide that you want to be a deep specialist and maybe pursue a PhD, we'll help you to plan, to guide, to expose, 
We have our Center for Future Ready Graduates who have dedicated career advisors for you, uh, both at the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and the School Faculty of Science. These include uh, networking sessions with industry within the curriculum. This includes internship opportunities. One of the things that I've always realized is that actually we've got more internship opportunities than students that we can send actually every year. So when industry comes to us and asks us, can you confirm and can you guarantee me a student? In reverse, I say actually it's a market driven uh, en environment. You choose the right students, the student also get to choose you simply because we have more internships than we have students. We will also have uh, uh, networking sessions with alumni, networking sessions with leaders of industries, the HRs of these leaders over the next three to four years that you are here. And towards the end, we will have what we call a get ready for graduation, where we have CV preparations, how to write interviews, how to pitch elevator pitches and so forth. This will be what we call the parallel curriculum, exposing you to exchange, exposing you to industry, exposing you to prepare yourself for the future. The career pathways are plenty and many and varied. Our career advisors are specialists who have deep insights and knowledge into different industries that service both FASS and FOS. So come, come and join us and make a relationship with these individuals. I also want to touch on the opportunities for scholarship and financial aid. NUS, we actually have the NUS undergraduate scholarships that are uh, called the NUS Global Merit Scholarship or the NUS Merit Scholarship. What's interesting about these, these are uh, full tuition fee waivers. You are also given the monthly stipend and it is bond free. You will have also others who may be very talented in the performing arts or visual arts or in sports. And we have special scholarships for those as well. Over and above these, any CHS and any faculty of science or arts students will also have support for many programs that I mentioned about earlier. In terms of overseas exposure, we have our own special within the college, uh, a special fund called the Science Faculty, for example, the Science Faculty Overseas Exposure Fund, so that we have the level playing field for everybody to be able to be exposed overseas. So let me just summarize uh, the educational hallmark of what CHS is and what your experience will be like in the coming years. You will go through a four years honors degree. This will be a student-centric, flexible journey, but we will have a lot of good advisors, the professors, the career advisors, the Center for Future Radies, your peers, your seniors, your network, who will help you uh, chart this journey. This will be a distinctive common curriculum because of the future that we see that you will have to face. This will be an interdisciplinary uh, curriculum at all levels, not only in the common curriculum. We want you to be market relevant, but we also want you to be able to pursue the deep passion that you have. We definitely want to enhance your career prospect we want to expose you to the new digital skills that is clearly crucial, but more importantly, we want you to learn how to learn. And we want you to be a lifelong learner moving forward. What we hope to see when you graduate, and we want to be preparing all this for you, will be someone who will come out of the college as a critical thinker. Someone who is going to think differently, someone who's not just going to solve predefined problem. As mentioned, someone who's going to learn to learn, someone who's going to have both breath and that. How are we going to do this? We are going to give you problem-based pedagogies. We're going to expose you to projects and research. We're going to expose you to internships. 
We're going to expose you to industry people lecturing in there. We want you to be what we call the T graduate that we envisage you will be when you graduate. We want you to be global citizens. As of today, even right now, more than 60, 70% of our students have actually spent either a semester overseas or uh, a, a term uh, during the winter and summer breaks, uh, taking the winter programs or summer programs. This enables you to be effective in different cultures. You become a global citizen. Our commitment to you is that we will bring the world to NUS, but we will also bring you to the world. We want you to have an explorer spirit, one who is going to be able to be bold and break new grounds, one who is also resi resilient and resourceful. You will come out with a can-do attitude. We hope that you will be resilient in the rapid changing world out there, but at the same time, you will understand your fellow man, you will understand your fellow cultures, you will be people skilled. If you graduate with this fruit and CHS, you will also be an able communicator, effective, but at the same time, a responsible communicator too. With this, this is what you will be when you go through the CHS experience. So let me just uh, leave you with a contact. Should you want to ask us a lot more questions, we have an email address called ask chs at nus.edu.sg. We also have our website, the, uh, the chs.nus.edu.sg. Uh, chs and actually, we are uh, glad to be able to answer a lot more of your questions right now. So I think I will call upon my fellow uh, colleagues, uh, Loy, uh, Melvin, uh, Chong Hao, and we have many questions, and I think they are busy answering many of them already. So, Loy, let me pass the time over to you to uh, moderate this. Hi. So there are many questions coming in. I've answered a lot of them uh, on the chat already. So please go and look at them. So let's just go and let me maybe let me curate a few obvious ones, right? So a lot of students are asking about the IGP. Perhaps uh, Fu Ting or Melvin, you all can quickly say something about that. IGP and uh, whether there are any quotas for spaces and stuff like that. Okay, let me just start by saying that uh, because we are a new college, uh, there is no known IGP at the moment. But I will just basically say that uh, uh, if you look at the past IGPs for FASS and FOS, and I think if you gauge it as an average between the two, FASS and FOS from the past, that will probably give you a good gauge already. Yeah. Uh, some students were asking about um, CHS and USP. Let me answer that. I'm actually from USP. So our current plan is that a big chunk of the common curriculum will be replaced by, if you're a USP student, you'll be replaced by USP modules and part of the UE will also be taken up by USP modules. And the reason is because USP is already interdisciplinary. You might even say that it's the more uh, intense and a smaller group version of what we are trying to achieve in CHS, which is a more, a, a more scale, a larger scale kind of version of it. Um, there's another related question, which is how this uh, relates to UNUS, how is CHS different from UNUS? And I'll say that uh, there's one obvious one now, in fact, the rest will say something as well. The scale is completely different. If your aim is to join a small liberal arts college and enjoy the intimacy of perhaps even knowing all your course mates, don't come to us, you've got to go to UNUS because it's taking about 250 students every year. If on the other hand, you want access to tremendous amounts of resources, instead of six pros in a certain subject, there are 60 of them, then you've got to come to us. Book team and uh, Melvin and... Chong Hao, you want to say something else to them? Yeah. yeah, so um, as Floyd pointed out, the, the difference is really the amount of expertise that you can tap for the major you're interested in. Um, so for example, uh, year NUS might have three to four psychologists. The psychology department in CHS will have 30 psychologists. And, and so we can actually cover a, a wider range of topics that students are potentially interested in. Um, and you... It, it, it also does mean that uh, if, you, if you have certain interest in a major that is more esoteric, uh, you're more likely to find someone in CHS which has that specific expertise um, to train you in the area. Yeah. Uh, Chonghao, perhaps you yeah. can mm. say a bit about uh, attitude-based admission because people are asking. Yeah, okay. So, so for students uh, who ask about the attitude-based admission, so uh, uh, if, when you apply to, for the admissions to the CHS, right, so you can actually indicate whether you want to be considered for the uh, ABA, so attitude-based admissions. In which case, uh, we will look for students uh, with uh, yeah, 
two interests, enthusiasms, and then uh, really interest is to understand, then go deep into certain knowledge. Yeah. So uh, the uh, shortlisted students will be asked to come for interview. And of course, during the interview, we really will ask you, uh, so if you're interested in topic A, so have you read about topic A? Uh, what do you like to do if you gain a lot of knowledge about a certain topic? And then what would you hope to do, right? Once you have a uh, uh, master those things yeah so really is uh, you can apply first and then uh, when you come for interview do prepare and then show us that you're really uh, very passionate about the topic yeah someone asked is computational biology still a, a major food thing perhaps you might want to answer that yeah so computational biology is going to in the uh, future uh, academic years will probably be planned as a cross-disciplinary uh, um, uh, degree just like what we have with bio, uh, with uh, uh, environmental studies and so forth. But as of this year, the coming year, we have decided that uh, for those coming in into uh, uh, computational biology or have interest in computational biology to pursue a degree in life science and we have launched a new minor in bioinformatics but at the same time also we are encouraging many of them to take a second degree or even a, a second major in computing, basically. So that still enables you to pursue a field, the field of computational biology. But uh, the reason why we have uh, taken our, on our time to uh, craft the XDP is because we are in the middle of further engaging with industry to even uh, recreate and recurate that, mod, uh, that uh, program. So uh, wait up. But for those who are coming in this year, you are not going to lose out simply because you can still pursue a degree, say, in life science, a second major in computing, and a minor in bioinformatics. Please consider that. Is NUSCHS too general to find a job in Singapore? Let me say some, just to remind everyone that uh, in the presentation given by Prof. Putin just now, remember that there are different, different kind of outcomes you can aim for. If you are gunning for certain kinds of outcomes, for instance, you would like to be an atom smasher in CERN, then I would actually say that you really need to be a deep specialist in, uh, you know, in your field, so that like in physics, for instance, right, so that you can actually apply for those uh, PhDs. But if on the other hand, the point is for you to uh, join industry, then perhaps a deep specialization is one possibility, but it's not necessarily the most obvious possibility. Like Prof. Futi mentioned just now that perhaps you are learning physics, but then actually perhaps you are thinking of joining in you know, Japan, some of the industries there, then you might want to pick up a bit of Japanese studies, perhaps even a language. So all these outcomes are available to you. So I will say that CHS, in gen CHS graduates are not going to be so-called too generally to find a job in Singapore. What we are trying to give you is the flexibility to, uh, to sort of a uh, to, to pursue the particular package of generality and specialization that you want, actually. You might want to say that. Uh, Melvin and uh, Zhong Hao, you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah I think, see, uh, look at the, the uh, curriculum design structures. The, you have uh, one third your majors and then about one third the common curriculum and then the other one third is a UE space. That means unrestricted elective. Uh, that is where you really can ask yourself, okay, what do I want to pick up? What are the skill sets I want to pick up? I want the knowledge I want to pick up. So that means you can go to your employer to present to the employer, ah, I'm very knowledgeable in A and at the same time also reasonably knowledgeable in B or maybe minor C. Okay, so in other words, you can now uh, show your employer that you are really versatile because you are able to uh, learn, pick up knowledge and also you should be able to convince your employer that I'm actually uh, able to learn continuously for lifelong. Yeah. So then employer will look at this person. Ah, this person can really contribute multifaceted way to the company. So that will also, of course, improve your chances of gaining employment. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think one thing on the add is that the CFS structure is extremely flexible. So it's, it's not a one size fits all. Uh, all 2,000 students with many different profiles, their different interests. And we, we are going to provide um, a lot of guidance along the way to help you to use that freedom optimally. So tell, we, we have career advisors who work with you. You tell us what you want to do and we will point you in the correct direction. We'll tell you these are the skills you need to focus on. These are the internships you need to go for if you want to maximize your chances of entering a particular industry. Yeah. Um, is it true that all majors are essentially available to CHS students uh, once the one student asks unconditionally? Uh, in particular, another student also asked about psychology. Perhaps Melvin, you want to... Okay, uh, I, I, I can answer that. I'm, I'm actually from the psychology department. Um, so the good news for CHS students is that your seniors may have told you that there previously used to be two gates that you need to clear in order to major in psychology. I'm happy to announce that those gates have been removed. Um, as long as you can pass the gateway module, as long as you can meet the graduation requirements, uh, you are basically a site major. 
Um, so that's the good news that we can share with um, all of you. But of course, uh, don't forget that there are direct entry programs. They are a little bit, um, I mean, you have to cross hurdles to get into the direct entry programs. So those are not as straightforward, but there are only a very small number of them. Okay. Um, there's also a question, I mean, general worry from some students. I'm more of an ex-student, science or arts. Am I, I mean, it seems as if I'm being forced to study the other thing. Um, you know, those of us who are designing common curriculum, I'm, I'm sure we have a lot of things to say, but uh, a full thing you want to sort of, sort of say something to reassure everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so I think, uh, let me reassure those who are very uh, um, uh, worried about, I'm from a science background and I've never taken an arts subject or vice versa. Uh, we are the ones who have de designed, for example, the scientific inquiry. It is meant to uh, be a situation where we expose you to current issues that you will face anyway as a person. For example, the pandemic, or for example, climate change. What are the issues? What are the deep thinking that we will have to think about? So uh, the question you may be asking is, would then the science student have a bit of an advantage over me? Well, not necessarily so. Uh, you will realize that when you come into NUS, whether it is from the humanities, uh, uh, social sciences, all the sciences, uh, there are slightly different ways we are teaching you from maybe how things were done in school. We are quite uh, uh, different in the way we are understanding processes and we are not interested only in giving you facts. If you learn uh, at the end of the day in, in, in NUS, we are talking about build, building skills, we're talking about knowing, building know-how but we are also talking about building a disposition. These three areas are what we are exposing you in very many of these uh, common curriculum modules, whether they are in the social sciences or they are in the sciences or in a field that is in between. Yeah. So uh, come and learn how to be what I call being human. Uh, this is to quote unquote the president of NUS. Okay, the time is already 10.54. I actually had to run off at the very least to go get ready for the PPE session that's coming up in six minutes time. I don't know whether the rest of you want to stay on for a few more minutes. Uh, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. stay on a few. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to leave, uh, take my leave and those of you who want to hear about the XDPs, you need to make your move to the various, to the three different uh, uh, cross this mini program panels that are coming up at 11 a.m. Yeah, uh, I just want to add, if you have interest in specific majors or the XDPs, do make um, time to attend those sessions because they can answer much deeper questions at those sessions. All right. See you guys. Yep. Thanks, Lloyd. Yeah. Thank you, Lloyd. Yeah. So I think maybe what we can do is in the last few minutes, we can still answer a few more uh, questions that have been uh, um, put into the more popular questions. Mm -hmm. um, I can just read off and see if anyone wants to answer. Okay, that. sure. Thanks, um, okay. I think the top question here was, will the common core curriculum be bell curve? If so, wouldn't art students struggle in the science modules and vice versa? Now, um, I could just answer straightly uh, that these common core modules, if I mentioned earlier, are going to be generic at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we, we're not going to talk so much about the bell curve at the end of the day. Uh, uh, you heard from uh, Prof. Loy earlier that, you know, you also have the option uh, of what we call the first year grade free semester or grade free year, where you can SU, we call it, uh, and uh, declare them uh, as just pass or fail. And that will help you make certain decisions and not be afraid at the end of the day to explore beyond some areas that are beyond you. Maybe uh, Melvin and, and Chokhao, yeah. you'd like to add to that? I, I can say something about this as well. Um, so this, this is not a new concern. When we talk to current students, um, they, are of, they are also worried that um, a module in humanities might disadvantage people from science and a module in scientific inquiry might disadvantage people from humanities. Um, but we have actually worked very carefully with instructors to make sure that the, le the playing field is level, meaning that if you are a humanities A-level student, you will not have any kind of special advantage from someone who, who did science subjects. 
uh, rather the course will be designed in such a way so that if you have two equally motivated students from different disciplinary backgrounds, if you both you work equally hard, you should both do equally well in that module. Uh, we have emphasized this to instructors uh, to make sure that um, this is actually done. So yeah. maybe I can ask, ask the next question is, it says here, if we declare a certain major, say for example, life sciences upon admissions, uh, are we allowed to change the year two uh, since the, the official declaration uh, was made earlier? Um, the answer is most definitely. Maybe Chong Hao can elaborate further too. Yeah, so, so the way the CHS structure is as follow, right? Uh, uh, when you apply to CHS, uh, we will encourage the students to declare your uh, first major, your primary major. However, we allow the students up to four semesters, that means within the first two years of your education in any year system, to uh, explore and see what you really write and whether you really uh, have an uh, intention to do a second major, so on and so forth. So we will only ask you to so-called confirm your choice by the end of the fourth semester, in other words, two years into the program. So really, we want the students to really sample, pursue, uh, look around and explore and really see how you want to chart your own education journey. So we emphasize, you are the one who decide what you know, it's a student-centric uh, uh, education journey. And having these two faculty, two big faculty coming in, so we can co-design interesting learning experience for you. Yeah. I want to add to that as well, that actually uh, there are opportunities to also uh, have a different major outside even CHS. Yes. Yeah? So don't just uh, confine yourself within the 30 majors and 50 minors. Uh, the whole of the NUS is our playing field as well. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I, I think uh, I saw quite a number of questions about whether you can do a uh, second major in management or second major in computing science. Yeah, please don't limit yourself to CHS. Look outside and look at all the interesting combinations that can potentially be um, explored. Uh, so sorry, Frost, I think we need to uh, uh, draw okay, this up. Uh, Sorry, uh, I, I think I can, for th those of you, I know that there are still 186 open questions. We're not, we're not able to answer everything on time. Uh, if you need an answer urgently, please direct your questions to askchs at nus.edu.sg. We have a staff who is monitoring um, the email lines. Uh, we will try to get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, so if it's something specific to us, please direct your emails to askchs at nus.edu.sg. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much, um, Prof Yap, Prof Chu, uh, Prof Sal, and also Prof Loy, who has uh, uh, gone off to the uh, XDP session. Uh, so once again, if you have further questions, uh, you can, of course, visit the CHS website at chs.nus.edu.sg.